This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going? I don't know how they're going, but uh, hey, happy Halloween, everybody. Oh, yeah, that happened yesterday for us. It was weird, though, because we had this really big storm roll in, like lightning and everything. It's been doing it all day yesterday, so there weren't many trick or treaters outside. Because they didn't want to get fried by lightning. It so, does it not an... feel like Halloween at all. Um, I wasn't even wearing the proper Halloween shirt. This is my Panavision Hollywood Halloween shirt. And my wife had to remind me what today was. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. But, hey, kids, uh, we're not going to have so many uh, tricks up our sleeve tonight. But we do have a treat. Right. And that is Mel Kirk is joining us. Hey, Mel. Hey, guys. Good to be with you again. Hey, hey. hey. When, when was the last time we were together? I don't know. Uh, I want to say it was in, what do you think, April, I think? Yeah. Things when we had just John D on. shut down. And yeah, that's right. That was about it. Um, you guys hadn't yet announced uh, that you were giving tables away uh, the, for free for the pandemic thing. But I know that you had hinted to me and Jared that at least that was a possibility. Um, so I think that was the last yeah. adventure. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> it's it's amazing too because we've been obviously spinning our wheels for months now trying to uh, figure out topics, and then all of a sudden these last three weeks, there's been just like a news dump of all sorts of stuff happening in the pinball world. So we're really happy to have you uh, here to uh, disseminate some of that for us, Mel. When it rains, it pours, and when it's dry, it's a drought. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get right into things with you. Uh, and I know that, uh, we got to step carefully, uh, because of where things go, but obviously cabinets have been announced and there was a whole thing about Zen's EULA, uh, contract. I'm just wondering if there's anything that you can, I don't know if you heard our, uh, we went over it last week. <laughs> We're not lawyers. Um, I don't know how much you can kind of clarify uh, Zen's stance within the, the EULA, how it affects the users, um, whatever you can part wisdom-wise, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Uh, there's two main things that, you know, in regards to the EULA and in this specific case. Uh, one, the EULA is meant to protect end users. So uh, first and foremost, um, you know, we want to give you guidelines uh, as to where you can use the software in its final state once you purchase it, because we have so much licensed content. Zen ourselves, we are liable uh, for misuse of IP and different uh, you know, misuses of it. And we don't want that burden, should there ever be one, to fall onto end users. Um, so Zen steps in and, and we are the entity that will take the, the heat. Number two, you know, you can't use it in a commercial environment. So, you know, that's it without written express uh, permission from us, an agreement of some sort, um, somewhere that I've gone to our licensors and said, hey, we want to distribute this game on this platform. Here's the financials. Here's why it makes sense for you guys. I need permission. Let's amend our agreement. And then we get permission and then we can do a coordinated launch. And if that doesn't happen, you don't have our permission to use our software in your commercial products. So there you go. Um, just out of curiosity, who does still have uh, licensing with Zen? I know obviously Arcade One Up, uh, VP Cabs did. I, do they still are they still yeah. an official licensor? Is yeah. there any other yeah. official licensors? Yeah, uh, the Arcade Factory is an official licensor, and they're the ones who are building our larger form location based products for okay. Golden Busters right. or Barricades, those sort of places. There's a handful of other independent distributors across the U.S. across Europe um, who have license uh, and can you know we. We do have a program. You can contact us, and if you want to use it professionally, we sign an NDA and we tell you our terms, and and then you get you get signed off, and we can do business together. So, okay, so there you go, yeah. folks. That's uh, <laughs> after last week's where we just kind of like stuck our foot in <laughs> into the muck and tried to uh, make sense of it. There's at least some a uh, little bit of clarification. All right, let's move forward. Uh, obviously, we've uh, had the release of Volume Six. Funhouse. Uh, uh, That's my new background. No, I know, right? <laughs> there we go. Good. Funhouse Space Station and Doctor Dude. Thank you for that background. My God, just total, total <laughs> blank there. Um, <laughs> those were those were something that we had thought 
And you had thought initially, and obviously that was pre-COVID thinking, um, that they were going to be out around May, uh, possibly June, and obviously came all the way around to October. Uh, how much of that was COVID-based that was causing a delay of the game? How much was it uh, just not realizing what emulating alphanumerics was going to involve? Um, it's I'd say it's 10% COVID, maybe less than mostly underestimating what the heck we are getting ourselves into. Um, and actually, the original release date for these, I'm looking back on our, our original calendar, you guys, it was Q4 last year. So oh my gosh. <laughs> we on our dev schedule had like, because, you know, we like to publish at the end of the year. We usually do like a December. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. I mean, so we had just come off of Universal Monsters, right? And then uh, that, and so, and then, yeah, anyway, we were trying to get them out last year, like Q4, like late in the year. Um, and we finally got to it uh, just recently. So. I, I was talking to the guys about because you know um, okay because <laughs> you you do a PNL you you have an estimated resource you have the sheet right that says okay let's go forward let's do this and when things are just so far off like just like light years apart you're like oh my god what just happened um, <laughs> basically the way they said to me is like Mel no. it was it's like uh, trying to read hieroglyphics or it's like Neo in the Matrix trying to make sense of things. We found just, uh, you know, difficulties around every turn, whether it was music, scoreboard, uh, just, you know, then once you once you get it running, integrating it into PFX, into our platform, I mean, this it was just, it was so crazy. Um, I mean, this is like one of the most hardcore coding efforts we've ever done for anything, pinball. So Wow. Yeah. That's that's kind of surprising because everybody yeah. just kind of assumes. The name community actually is giving us a lot of props right now because they're just like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> And so that, that's good feedback for us because those guys are pretty good too. So, Because, I mean, a lot of people just think, oh, well, those are older. They should be simpler. And then, Jared, your your theory had to do with uh, clock speeds, right? Yeah, definitely clock speeds. Because, like, trying to dial back the, the processor, like the modern processors we have today are, like, so powerful. And these ones were running on, like, 15 or 20 megahertz processors. So trying to slow everything down enough that the game doesn't just run at like 100 miles an hour would have been probably one of the largest problems. And I believe that was probably one of the biggest ones that Farsight had at the time, just trying to govern everything back again to a reasonable speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the decoding effort, I mean, it, I don't know. We just, I'll just say we just underestimated every aspect of it. Um, these are complicated things. And I, you know, not to jump too far ahead, but when you start touching like old mechanical physical stuff and then trying to make it, um, you know, modern software, uh, we we just underestimated it. And going forward, we now know we have a basis to work from. But, you know, each of these games is going to present other challenges, not to say like, oh, we figured it out now. I mean, every, like I said, each one of these tables, like whether it's the music, um, there's just, uh, I don't know, all the different sounds, just dot matrix, uh, scores, all the stuff we have to put into our logic is... It's complicated stuff. So I'm hoping it'll be faster, but because we've unlocked like 25 to 30 games, you know, that we can potentially bring in now. Um, yeah. Oh, they're running the same kind of board, basically. Yeah. 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 All the system 11, system nine sort of architecture um, comes in now, which is awesome. So yeah, <laughs> I think the community actually is really looking forward to seeing more new stuff like Space Station coming in rather than stuff we might've seen on other platforms before. <clears throat> that's That's what we're focused on too. So. <laughs> Excellent. So, so we're not too far off base then than in saying that uh, a lot of extra time was basically made to not just make these three machines work, but potentially other machines that come into the place that you'll have a good foundation with which to problem solve from there. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like this was a trial by fire. And uh, the, the team that worked on these tables specifically has a lot of very valuable knowledge now. Um, so we're not starting from scratch. I mean, we're starting from a much higher... Uh, just start, you know, a, a base, so to speak. So hopefully they will be faster next summer. I know they will. But. <laughs> um, now, something that just popped up, I think, this past week was uh, you guys have a Mandalorian table uh, for Star Wars that you're working on. And... <laughs> uh, so I got the, the background I got the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, tentative date sometime in uh, in spring uh, curious was the original plan to try and make it coincide with the second season that's uh, now just started streaming or was that never even part of it it's just more of a, a 
I know sometimes you guys like to air after or you know put up tables after the product has actually uh, been aired. Oop, that's me. Yeah. No, I mean two things. Like Mandalorian is obviously very popular. Yeah. Um, and I think there's going to be a long roadmap for Mandalorian just in general. Um, we wanted to. It's always it's better for us to not try to hit big entertainment launches anymore because uh, especially film and television they change things at the last moment with colors or a design of an item or an object or something that's in our game that we've already fully 3d modeled and is functional so we've kind of separated and distanced ourselves from hitting like on a launch but if we can be a part of something that's trending a lot of forward movement then uh, then we'll jump on that there's there's some other secrets and surprises uh, to talk about with, with the mandalorian table specifically but for now we just wanted to give you guys like Hey, it's in production. Uh, here's a quick glimpse in uh, 2021. <laughs> uh, I know some one question that people have been kind of asking regarding this, especially uh, it's those that are on the Switch. They want to know, is the Mandalorian table plan to then integrate with the uh, Star Wars app that's on the Switch? Um, or is it just going to be a standalone table? Or is it going to be integrated into FX3? How's that going to work? Yeah, that's actually something I can't talk about yet. Okay. Uh, Working on something uh, like The Mandalorian, um, I'm not even going to pretend or go outside of the bounds of what we've agreed upon for communication. So, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic table. Uh, everything that you would expect from, you know, that you'd expect out of The Mandalorian table is going to be there. And uh, it's really cool. So <laughs> I wish I could say more, but that those 15 minutes, that's about it. We, we, we right. won't uh, make you, uh, you know, dance on anything that uh, has licenses pulled. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, though, the fact that you guys are working on The Mandalorian, that brings up the idea that, hey, Zen's back at work on original tables. Uh, well over a year ago, you had mentioned that there were uh, originally two original tables that were in the works, and then suddenly there was three original tables that were in the works, and those were supposed to be released quite a while ago, too. Just kind of checking up, what's the status on... Uh, so those, those other originals and are those we original, more originals those, those original yeah it's a pack of three um they are still in production they will release um i they're not going to come out in 2020 but they will <laughs> they will launch and um i really love the, the the themes that we have associated with those so uh creating original tables is a priority for us both uh on brand you know licensed and unlicensed I look back over the history of everything we've launched, um, and surprisingly, our original tables, or maybe you guys might not be surprised, our original tables, uh, well, they're very profitable for us because we don't have to pay licensing on them. Yeah. And they sell um, maybe as well as a lot of our biggest IPs. So I know there's a demand for them, and I, and I always want to have at least a new three-pack of Zen Originals every year. Like, going forward, I committed to that, maybe more, um, but, but that's what we're... We, we've done an incredible revamp of all of our resources for pinball, the planning, the strategic. I have a 10-year plan I just presented last week in Budapest, 2020 through 30 of what I see. I've, of course, after a year or two, it gets murky because of changing technology and new platforms and who knows what else. But we got a long-term roadmap, and original tables are uh, very, very important to that roadmap. Now, I know that also people are kind of wondering with these new originals, um, and I think Deep had mentioned this to us at uh, one point, but uh, they're being designed with the Williams physics in mind? Yeah. You know, it seems like the, the pro physics, the Williams physics, whatever you want to call them, are the preferred, uh, you know, play. We, we've got a lot of data now, especially from, like, our core group of players, our, our, you know, guys who care about the game. They don't care so much about the theme, uh, you know. They want physics. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the cornerstone sort of physics that we are going with. So I'm going to just turn this on so the light is correct. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, you know, and I'm hoping on all of our older tables soon, we'll have all those uh, physics available as well. Yeah, I know that's a lot of, we, we get asked that a lot. <laughs> it's like, guys, yeah. we don't know anything other than what you've heard in the podcast. So <laughs> we're sort of, a, I mean, I hate to say it, but like, we're kind of a victim of our own success. We've, we've got a portfolio now of over a hundred pinball games. And so anytime you want to do something to the whole collection, it's just this massive undertaking. Right. I, mean, I know. And then we got to, and then it's like, well, can we monetize this again or what? Because we still got to have sell new stuff. It's gone. The money's it's still got to come from somewhere, right? Like, <laughs> you can't just pull it from thin air. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, we you know we've always tried to give away as much as we can, and then like when there's something worth value for someone to purchase, make it a good value for them. But working on new features and constantly evolving the whole entire collection is is a lot of work. 
Mm. And then, of course, the item that's been being talked about the most these past couple of weeks, uh, it has to do with the pinball cabs and specifically with the uh, Arcade 1-Up pinball cab. We've been finally getting a dump of information on that. And you've got one in your house, or at least a prototype in your house. Yep. I do. Um, I was sent a machine back in July and uh, showed up in a box from direct from the factory. No instructions, no anything about how to put it together. <laughs> it I was a bit of a guinea pig because, yeah, yeah, there's there's a picture. Um, I was a bit of a guinea pig because uh, these, you know, RK went up. They know their stuff. They know how to put it together quickly and, you know, can do that. But like, hey, uh, can someone just, you know, on arrival, what's the experience like putting this together? Do the pieces all fit? Is it becoming functional? So I got kind of like, you know, day one version. And I've been tinkering with it for a, a lot. I've been making a lot of suggestions based on that machine. But I love it, and um, you know, it, it. We could. I don't know what questions you have, but I could. A lot. I could just give you whatever you want. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll throw. I'm sure Jared has plenty of questions on this. I'm going to throw this one out first because I know it's kind of been one of the differences between this cabinet and the other manufacturer's cabinet. This has the acrylic top. Curious how easily or difficult would it be for somebody to swap out the acrylic for their own piece of glass if that was something that they wanted to do take you two minutes okay so it's just a slide out piece basically yep okay there, there you yeah, go folks you know because look we we built these so uh, with knowing it you know these are going out in a certain format they're not wirelessly well, wirelessly connected and we sacrificed um some graphics you know some visual fidelity for performance so uh, we want them to be upgradable if you'd like to. We're also keeping in mind our price point, so we could be at retail. Um, so we, I mean, we didn't just like, hey, what do, 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 I mean, we thought about this, like a lot of this. So <laughs> you can unscrew, you pull out the little metal pieces, you can take the glass off and put it in your own glass if you want. It takes you two minutes. Because that's uh, that right there, I believe, is the tray that holds the acrylic, if I'm not mistaken, right? That acrylic is just sitting on top of there. It's not glued to it. It's not like silicone to it. So you can just take that off. Okay. Easy peasy. Jared, yeah. your turn. Okay. So um, I I think uh, when I'd be, I was looking through all the news sources and John D was talking about the, the product, we were going between, um, there was a word of transducers and solenoids. And initially I got quite excited by the concept of transducers to sort of convey the, the feeling of the ball rolling um, and stuff like that. But then I noticed in the final build, it's confirmed that we got solenoids doing the haptic feedback um, mm -hmm. in the cabinet. So it's just solenoids, isn't it now? It's solenoids, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's, that's fair enough. So um, the, is the that, whole Just real quick, is that what rolling. the little black box there on the... Uh... Right hand and side, just beyond the plunger, is that the solenoid itself? Um, yeah, I believe that. That so we have four solenoids in there, and that looks. There's two on that are you can't see in the further back in the box, like down to the base, and then you have the two on the sides. Yeah, for the uh, flippers. Okay, because I know yeah. that that was initially okay. our kid went up and said that there were only three, and then your video said four. So that's people are like, ooh, four. That's better. <laughs> Look, we, I mean, we held them to the fire. So we said, no, it doesn't feel right. And they said, oh, okay. So I, I mean, you know, but it was, that, that's the beauty of it is like, we actually have a capable hardware partner and we have got a capable software company. So, you know, we can actually make something that feels good. Right. So on the subject of haptics, so you would, you stand, stand in front of this thing and played it now. Like, what does it feel like to actually stand in front of this thing and flip it? Like, what is the feedback like? Yeah, it's, it's strong. I mean, we, it's not, and, and that's the thing, it, like, it, it feels like, you know, you can feel it. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it in the words. And that was in the mm -hmm. video. I went, I did that segment so many times. I was like, I don't know how to say it, but like, you can feel it. Um, how does it feel? Does it, could you describe, I guess we were comparing things when you hold like an Xbox controller and you get the vibration in the Xbox controller, how does it differ from that feeling when you're actually playing the cabinet? It's not a rumble. It's a it's a click. I mean, it is like it's actual tick. impact. Yeah, yeah. It's not the rumble kind of feel like in a controller. It's a it's an impact. So when a ball hits a bumper, like if you impact, yeah. I, mm, I cool. 
basically exactly like a solenoid because it's that that hammer punch and not just yeah. a rolling wave that would be in your controller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How does it? Um, how does that feel though? Because I know that again with your full size cabs that you've got out there, uh, I believe you have uh, solenoids in those too, correct? Yep. Yeah, there's solenoids in those. So how does um, it compare to a full size machine like that? Yeah, th that's a good qu that's a good question. It actually feels the same. It it feels the same as a larger format machine. Okay. That's pretty cool. That is really yeah. cool. And just so you know, uh, and I didn't go over this in the video, but in the settings, like we give you the option to turn off the solenoid. So if you want like a night mode, you know, it'll be quiet. Um, oh, that's neat. <laughs> that actually <laughs> night flows mode. into some, not night mode. <laughs> so yeah, the, quiet, the other thing, babies. Whatever. We don't want to wait for your, your little yeah, seat. or you live in apartments. That would be, uh, I'd imagine, <laughs> big solenoids hammering away constantly might be a, a problem. That's yeah. a fair call. Now, that actually brings me on to some other questions I had about, um, I guess, from not so much the hardware side, but the software side. Um, a lot of folks, I'm sort of hanging around in a couple of the um, Facebook forums for Arcade One Up, and um, a lot of people are asking, oh, can we turn off the Zen animations? Can we turn off? the score pop-ups, all this sort of stuff that, you know, we often do on Steam. How does that translate into the, um, the the table package? Can you do that sort of thing in there too? You can turn off the ball trails or ball effects, whatever you call them. I know everyone has different terms, but yep. you can't turn off the in-game animations. Uh, on the Williams games, those are shipping in their authentic, uh, you know, like, recreation. So, you know, you're not going to have all the, like, the, the second all version the of the Yeah. That's also pro physics there, but um, you can turn on and off ball effects. So that that's kind of across the board for all three games. You can you can turn them off. So okay, when so you say the ball, ball effects, you mean also the scores that pop up? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if, those, if it's turning off the the pop up scores. I think it's just the ball effects. I can go check it out after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, yeah, well, you, know, that's you, like, you don't you don't look at you don't really you're like because you're looking for something very specific. I actually right. haven't. I haven't even turned off the ball effects myself, so. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's a good one to sort of get out there because I think a lot of people want to know, like, if they can just make it more look like just traditional pinball, like mm -hmm. without some of the Zen overlay stuff over the top of it. Yeah. And then you said that uh, the the Williams tables are going to be playing with the pro or the Williams physics, as we like to uh, refer to them as. Um, is that going to be, though, like, Right now, the tables that are pre Volume Four have lack the flipper physics that the ones Volume Four and after do have. Um, is that going to be still the case with the, these selected tables, or has uh, that been put back? Uh, uh, the the improved physics put into those early tables for this cabinet release. Yeah, those tables have the improved physics. So, like I, we've been working on getting all of our tables you know, implemented with, with those Williams physics uh, and those are done and those are shipping in the game uh, with that, with those updates. Very good. Another thing people mm. have been asking us about for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, I'll say, and it's also, it's the uncensored versions of those tables as well. Okay. So, uh, you know, we have uh, our rating limitations in, in various platforms, but here getting the, the, the full unaltered versions. Of course, That's the funny good. thing about that is, is that so many of the, alterations are on the side art of the cabinet and the back box of the cabinet, which we're not going to be seeing anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, there, there's things in the content. I mean, you know, there, there's just little things, but uh, it's all there. Are there any swappable graphics? Uh, like if you, in the case of attack from Mars, if you didn't want the back box to be attack from Mars, but you want to be one of the other tables there, are there, is there the ability to swap in a different graphic there? You could take that thing apart and put whatever you want in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's not necessarily something that was uh, in, like, it's not shipping with extra v items that we know of, I should say. It's not shipping with anything. Look, this this first, we had a goal in mind uh, to get units out for this holiday season, and yeah. we absolutely had to do that. Along the way, we discovered a lot of things that would be cool to do in the future, and we will do those things in the future. But we also kept in mind as we realized all that, hey, we need to make sure that these first machines can also be brought up to speed if people want them and they don't want to buy another machine. So mm -hmm. um, that was very common and very important because um, th this is a long, you know, th this is just step one. And like, it, I think about when phones launched, like the very first phone and the next year there's a better phone and the next year there's a better phone, right? It's just how yeah. hardware and software go. But 
keeping in mind that we want the people who embrace us the very first time through give you every option and opportunity to just you know hopefully a very low cost to just keep upgrading um, your machine that is excellent news i think uh people will be quite happy to hear that they can just put a new board in and i mean you you've done it it doesn't seem that difficult to do um so yeah that's excellent news it was enjoyable it was like a big kid lego project and my daughter was my scarlet who's my my gamer she loved it she was working with me on it it was, it was a lot of fun i got a question about um uh the you know this because i'm a nerd um <laughs> the frame rate the frame rate and resolution of the the cabinet and screen so we know it's 60 hertz uh 60 frames per second um and that's good um uh, what about the screen resolution is it 720 or 1080 it's 720, 720. 720, right. Yep, and we did. We, we sacrificed um, some visual fidelity for performance uh, with pinball. It's if you have, you know, <laughs> frame rate issues, uh, the game, you know. So you yeah. the resolution. It's an easy fix. Yeah. That being um, said, on a 24 inch monitor, uh, it's much more forgiving at 720. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Between 720 and 1080, as opposed to if you start going larger, then you're all seeing pixels. So. It looks like, oh, I don't know if this is the case, but is the, is it sort of like a, a hybrid Android build? Like the Williams Pinball sort of style build? Or is it like completely different? Like we would never have seen this software before in any yeah. flavor. No, it's a good question. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. Um, you know, I did hear the machine to be shipping. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is running basically a high-end Android version of, of the game. So uh, when you think about keeping the cost down, you, you know, we're not running a high end PC in there. It is no it's really hard, hardware, um, the chipset, you know, and chipsets are, are changing very quickly with Android. So by very soon, actually, we could have an even powerful, uh, a more powerful chip in there. And that's, like I said, the update sort of kit that we can get out to people mm -hmm. they just want to order and just give them a board and they swap it in. And there you go. So it would be feasible if you add features, you know, things like, you know, leadable connectivity stuff down the track. It's just a board, you put it in and you're away. You can just use the shell to keep on upgrading the thing until it gets to the point where perhaps you might want to drop in a new monitor, like a high resolution monitor or something like that with some of the newer builds, yeah. I imagine. That's really good. Yeah. And you know, just, you kind of touched on, on wireless, like functionality for leaderboards and things like that. Um, look, it is easy. People are asking, why don't you have wireless? Well, yeah, we could put a wireless receiver, a dongle, anything in there and make it wireless. But the, the, what, what does that mean? I mean, the, the experience that you go online and if, there, if there's a store, like what are you looking at? How are you connecting? That is just a massive undertaking in infrastructure and a live service and another platform. I have to go get approvals like, hey, licensors, Zen is now going to have our own store. We're going to have our own platform, uh, like distribution of content, our protection for piracy. Do we have user accounts? I mean, like you don't, oh, just, well. yeah. you don't, just, you don't just launch a yeah, it is wireless. I mean, like we would be still probably next year before we got anything out like this time next year, but how much store could be ready in a on, true online service. So why didn't we do wireless? I mean, there's a lot of really good, you know, reasons, but um, I think in our roadmap, you can see where this will go. It's funny because mm -hmm. I saw uh, John D in an interview where he was saying, yeah, the, the actual part to make it wireless, that's dirt cheap. He goes, but then you got to create the network and you got to staff the network and you got to have all these people programming the network and making sure it's functioning. And he's like, there's where your cost is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, look, what we're launching is, I mean, we're going to see, right? We, we need a little bit of a proof of concept knowing that there is a demand. People do want to buy something like that. You know, people want to invest in this. Um, so we, we're putting forward what I think is a fantastic product at a price point that's unbelievable. And people say, well, why is this price point so much higher than the others? Well, keep in mind, Guys, uh, Arcade One Up is officially licensed product, and that carries an overhead in itself, yeah. which is more higher than another company per se, who's got lower, lesser known or less popular, at least lesser expensive licenses, or they think they can get access to the licensed content without having to pay for it. So, yeah. you know, it, like this is a legitimate business enterprise. To uh, <laughs> so, so there's a lot involved. The price that we that we hit is actually incredible. So, um. In the wireless stuff, come later. That's where it's, I, I'm amazed that, uh, obviously it seemed like there was a game of chicken between the four companies. Uh, who was going to announce their price first? Who was going to announce launch first? Um, who was going to show their render first? And the fact that everybody was kind of aiming right at, I mean, I think they're all within $100 of each other, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So it's incredible that, uh, obviously to go from 
this price point at you know five to six hundred dollars and then if you want to go to your next step of virtual cab suddenly you're at two thousand dollars so yeah it's amazing the the price jump that it's, it's a very good entry level to at least yeah. entice people try it out yeah like, work out whether like a pinball machine in your home is actually something you want like before it was a two thousand dollar experiment now it's you know <laughs> five or six hundred dollar us experiment which you know i think i could probably swallow that a little bit easier <laughs> <laughs> what we're gonna what we're gonna find is uh you know these are gonna be look if you're a hardcore pinball player and you've come up that was a part of your childhood and it was part of you growing up in arcades you're gonna look at this machine and you might think a certain thing about it but I tell you what someone from my kids generation who's never been around a pinball machine and they see this thing it it's like a, it's magnetic and they get their first mm. pinball experience and I think more pinball is just better like the future of this is it is all all ships rise so this is built for a very specific purpose for you know fit in the home be affordable be fun <laughs> like i think we've accomplished that who uh is it you or is it one up is it a, a combination of both uh how do you guys pick which tables we're going to be uh put into each of these cabs it's a good question uh we kind of want you know we've, we've got a lot of tables for star wars marvel and williams we wanted just uh, a good selection of themes and content whether it was character based or location based or film based um, in the case of Star Wars for Marvel, just like, you know, uh, you'll notice that there's no cinematic tables on, on, in this game. list. Yes. It's all like, uh, comic based. So mm -hmm. Marvel steered us, you know, they had a lot to say about that. Um, the MCU stuff they wanted maybe in its own, uh, you know, unit, maybe, I don't know. We'll see uh, for William. Yeah. It was just about like, um, you know, we love all these games. How do you pick, <laughs> so, you know, that was it. That's the process. Roll the dice and there you go. I assume that yeah. uh, Marvel also is the one... Uh, they came up with the cabinet art regardless of what the actual tables that you have include. And I always say that because I see Black Panther and uh, there is no Black Panther table. <laughs> no, that's a very, very, very small, very quick cameo in Civil War table. So... Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I realized I was like, you know, I bet in order to have Captain Marvel on there, they've got to put in A Force. And I was correct about that one. Um, yeah. And you know what? The, the licensing effort for this is unbelievable what has gone on. Because, um, you know, we deal with the games groups. This is a physical product now. So it goes through a different licensing group um, at Disney for Marvel and, and Lucasfilm. But then you have crossover between the games team and the physical products team you've got music you've got the game itself you've got likeness i mean what goes into this is unbelievable and that's why you know i i've been so vocal and so like you know this is the way you do it right you can't just come over here and, and take our stuff and promote it and, and and say buy our machine it doesn't work like that right. so <laughs> um you had made mention of this uh, again last time we talked to you, and a lot has obviously can change within that time period. Um, but you had mentioned that since quite a few of the uh, either the Marvel or the Star Wars tables are wide body, and that's not the shape of the monitor, that some of them are going to maybe have to have their the shape of the table changed somehow. Or you'd mentioned that it was going to need to be able to fit the monitor. Are they going to look in cabinet mode wildly different than what they look on? say your phone, which obviously is a cabinet mode view. Yeah, they're going to look different. We moved uh, the, the camera itself, the positioning of the camera, um, so the table is, is formatted correctly. Again, another optimization, another bunch of work that we did for every 30 of these tables, right? Um, and so, yeah, it, they're going to look different than what they were before. My TV went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it did yeah. go to sleep. Um, <laughs> that's Because I think that's also a, something to point out for anybody that is thinking of, well, hey, I already have a virtual cab. Why would I want to get one of these? It is going to be a different view than if you were just, you know, had Steam running on your virtual cab. Yeah, it's a it's a different view. Uh, I mean, like the cab features that we optimize for Steam. Um, look, there's so many different hardware. <laughs> We'd never be able to like give everybody their own specific optimization. So we try to provide, you know, I think the roadmap is like we give people tools to optimize for whatever screen they're using. But these ones are specifically uh, optimized for this size screen in this environment with the hardware that's inside the machine. I've got a, um, a question that sort of relates to when you're in game and you're playing the table. I notice a lot of the time on certainly the, the Belly Williams 
uh, machines with the uh, the Zen phys- uh, Zen graphics. Um, the players, the 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 character animations in there tend to be um, more oriented at people playing on a screen, like for example, uh, a PS4 or an Xbox. That sort of orientation. The figures look at you like that. But when you actually got the the tables in maybe a portrait mode um, on your computer, they tend to still look forward and not up at you. Have you sort of done any um, refinements to how the characters address you as a player in the game um, for those ones that actually have characters that sort of do that in the tables? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think we've made any changes there. I'd have to check on that to be honest, though. But mm-hmm. just. From my experience playing, I don't notice any difference in positioning of, of the characters and the way that they're responding to you. Sorry, my dog is barking. I hope you can't. I don't know if you hear him or not. That's all right. Um, I've got kids yelling in the background, so <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> really the phone going off earlier. We're, we're a tightly run ship here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, I didn't notice any changes to the uh, to the character placements in 3D interactive characters and whatnot, um, but I could ask the, the guys if, if they did make any tweaks like that. Yeah, okay. No. The... Obviously, these are all tables that, um, you know, with the Marvel and Star Wars, those are a license that I think those are why those are going into the retail stores because anybody can see that and immediately go, oh, yeah, I want that, which I find it strangely enough that the Attack from Mars cabinet, which I know a lot of us more hardcore pinball players are like, that's the one we'd want, that that one's going to be the online only, but I kind of almost get it in terms of what grabs the attention in, in, you know, on a store shelf. But where that makes me wonder is what could be the future of Zen Originals and like the non-licensed Zen Originals uh, appearing in a cabinet at some time? Yeah, I think um, so. There's a lot of there, you know, there's a lot of options on the table for what we can do. And uh, what we learned about the retail business is they need things at a certain price point, and they want things with a certain IP on it. And they, you know, the, the buyers respond a certain way to that. If you get a little too expensive, then they don't they don't want to run it. They just can't sell it here. If you don't have the right IP, it's not going to find its audience with these stores. So I know Arcade Went Up is building their online presence so that they can ship direct to consumer. Mm-hmm. But actually, also save costs because then you get rid of a lot of middle you know middlemen, so to speak, at, in the retail model. Um, a lot of people have asked for like specific Zen IPs branded on the cabinet. Um, it'd be cool. Like personally, I'd love to have a Doom machine. You know, all just like, right. Like this is yeah. my rock, my rock and roll pinball. That's what I think about. I want dudes. the aliens one. Alien, I'm just <laughs> aliens. Come on. Say that. <laughs> yeah. Aliens. Aliens. Machines with cool artwork that people want, or make it swappable. Like just you can have your machine be an alien this month because it's April 26. Alien Day is coming, and then like now we're getting ready for May 4. So we got my my Star Wars skin. Can we make it customizable? And then the online connectivity uh, enables other content to be you know downloaded to the machine. Or do we ship a game that has a limited number of tables because we can't build a 20 table universe with uh, every brand and then we just supplement it with Zen Originals. So um, there, there's a lot of different options on the table. Uh, again, look, the very the good news is we had an allocation of Marvel units go to GameStop uh, the other day and they sold out like instantly. So right. mm. we said, okay, good first step. You know, um, I can't tell you what the number is, but it's impressive. And uh, and, and so we're starting, we're, we're seeing the, the response and it's like, you go to the next step. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way it's going to go. Good. Yeah, we're we're very curious to see, I mean, from all indications, uh, all these pre-orders of all these cabinets are just going to fly. Um, so, I mean, it, it. we keep on saying that this is nothing but a good thing for digital pinball because yes. the more eyeballs that get on this sort of thing means the more people that are going to seek it out, you know, on their consoles or on Steam and go, oh my gosh, look at all these other games. And then you throw on the form factor of an actual cab in your home. I, I think it's just primed to explode, which is why it's so exciting to hear you guys uh, tout that you have this 10 year plan. I honestly believe, I mean, on, here on the RK1 upside, you know, I think a lot of people do want a pinball machine in their home and they have different ideas of what that might look like based on price and footprint. And I think if you reduce the size and you make it affordable, I think those are the two things that have been blocking mass market pinball machine adoption in the home. Um, and that's why you see such a race to get here. Like all these companies all of a sudden trying to get their their, their piece and their share. Um, and that's fine. I think that that's fantastic. There should be options. Like more options is better for the market. Competitive mix companies 
you know, have to do better and provide a better proposition. But the long term health of pinball, I think that this is a major thing that can really invigorate an, a whole new audience, like just grow a new fan base. My kids, like they enjoy pinball for a little bit on the Xbox, but I put this thing in Scarlet's room and like they play it every day and I don't even ask them to. They just they like, Dad, come on, can we play a game real quick? Like we haven't we haven't played Fantastic Four yet. We want to play, you know, um, and then we have a piece of their home that's that's very special. So we want to give them something that's really worth it, that they feel good about investing in. Now, this is what I've been saying with having uh, an arcade one-up Street Fighter cab sitting there in my living room. It's not something that I ever wanted to play on PC because playing on a controller to me wasn't the experience. Having it in cab form with proper buttons and a joystick and the ability to just turn it on and 30 seconds later be playing, I've play that so much more than I ever would have if I was like, oh, I got to go sit at the computer, turn on the computer, boot up Steam, get the game loaded. You know, by that time, you're almost like, do I really want it? Nah. And then you walk away from it. <laughs> well, look, I mean, this game has been around. I always say this. Pinball is way older than I am, like three times as old as I am, right? Yeah. And um, it keeps going and it it's transcends and it's demographic list. One of the main reasons for that is that it's fun. And, you know, we always get kind of caught up and like, there's all this stuff flying around, but I mean, like, especially right now, it was, it's just cool to like be sending something to somebody or to a family's home where it's going to help them have fun, especially in today's environment and stuff. And that's what I am so excited about. Um, and that sounds a little, you know, it is what it is, but it's like, it's very fun. And I'm proud of that. So give us a little preview. Uh, 2020 was supposed to be, uh, Oh, what was the term just wild or uh, uh, I can't remember what the term was you guys said and obviously nobody predicted what was going to happen so what's 2021 looking like for uh, for Zen Studios and Pinball okay um, well we still have, we, we have something that we're going to hopefully reveal this year um, that'll set the stage for next year uh, we want to go out with a bang we know um, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably the biggest one at fault. So I'll, I'll raise my hand and say, you know, we're very excited about everything we got going on. Uh, and there's a lot of it and it's just, it's taking on a shape that is, uh, like bigger and more exciting than what I thought it would be. And therefore we've, we've seen delays with it. We do need to be better about communicating, um, you know, what's happening and when and all that. And we're creating a format, which I think we're going to be able to, to do that and keep everybody engaged and up to speed and be very conversational. So, Hopefully this year we're going to um, to already start to improve that and give you guys something and a real glimpse into what's happening uh, for next year because uh, next year in 2022, are, you will actually see the results of all the work we've been doing that we've been talking about since last year. You will absolutely see it and it will, I hope, make everybody uh, smile and, and be like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> Hopefully everyone will just forget about the 2020 and go, all right, yeah, whatever. That was just one of those years. That was a, a I'm pretty sure year. that everybody just wants to forget 2020 in general. I think they really do. <laughs> no. And I'll, I'll reiterate, Zen's commitment to pinball is not diminished by uh, by any means. It, it is bigger. Um, it is grand, more grand. Our, we have maybe some some really out there, in this, like going to outer space type of ideas, but they're they're happening. That is awesome. Good. Well, Mel, I think that's uh, all the questions that we have for you at, uh, at this time. I feel like we... I, do I don't know, Jared, is more. there anything we didn't touch upon that we needed to touch upon? I, I just thought of one more then, actually. And you know, it, your comments about, you know, getting, like, walking out into a machine, turning it on, and then playing. What's that experience like on the 1UP cab? Like, how long from power on to play? Uh, for power on to play, is, I'd say is 30 seconds, 45 seconds at, at the very most. Um, I, I guess it's a good time. Yeah, it'd be a good video to do, actually, um, to, to show people how long they can expect to just like turn it on. Not even enough time to make a coffee, basically. Just <laughs> Yeah, we, the other day when we were doing our video, I wanted, there was other things that we were trying to get, but the lighting just, we were, we had no power here in California. We were generator with extension cords and we had some lighting, but I'm going to just, you know, now I have better lighting. Maybe I'll just take some more clips and, and post them. Awesome. Yeah. That was that was the last one, Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, we want to say uh, thanks again, Mel. You're always a, a, a pleasure to have on to the show and uh, sharing with us what you can, because obviously there's plenty that you can't share. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it's I, I can't wait to actually 
uh, get my hands on one of these these cabs. I don't know when that'll be, but I me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I have no idea because it's like the last time I touched a virtual cab was maybe guy two and a half years ago, and that was the Arcuda Beta cab, which didn't have haptic feedback, and so there was a lot missing from what I wanted from to feel with the virtual cab experience. So. Um, yeah. no, we're definitely looking forward to, to, to seeing these and seeing people's reactions to them. And I'll just say, yeah, thank, thank you guys for having me. I always appreciate the way you guys are, uh, covering news in the industry. It's, um, I think you guys do it the right way. So happy to, to share. All appreciate right, everybody it. that there is, uh, Mel Kirk, COO of Zen studios. Uh, that guy over there, there we go. Kind of look properly that that's, uh, Jared <laughs> on the other side of the world and in the future. And uh, I'm me. Hey, thanks, everybody. We will see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you all.